An artist paints in response to a vision that inspires him. That vision is personal, but because the artist lives in a community of other people who have particular cultural traits, the artist's vision reflects the worldview of the culture. Because of this, the paintings in Altamira Cave and other Paleolithic caves imply a worldview. So too do the petroglyphs on Newspaper Rock imply a worldview. The paintings and glyphs are quite different, and the worldviews that they imply are therefore quite different. This difference implies that a paradigm shift took place among cavemen. People don't change the way they think about the universe over morning coffee. The universe gives them a kick in the butt. The bucolic world of Paleolithic people came crashing down around their brushes and pigments. Images of cute horses no longer made sense. Circles and ladders and duck-headed stick figures made the new world go round and go sideways and backward too. Angry and capricious gods depopulated the world and resurfaced it. This was perhaps the world's first urban renewal project, and it seems not to have gone well. The changes aren't so dramatic today, but the modern age has brought a world that's just as different as gods were to horse people. What does it mean to see the universe in x-ray and radio light? What does it mean to look up at our own planet from the moon? What does it mean to collect dust from a comet? What does it mean to measure the density of invisible particles in space? What does it mean to think about electricity lighting the stars? Today's world is not Newton's or Einstein's world. Like the cavemen, we're not prepared for this. Our skills at drawing horses and explaining things with gravity and gas can't handle the strangeness. The universe is becoming populated with new objects. Planets are not isolated motes of mass, but are electrically connected cells of comet-like plasma sheaths. Stars are not specks of hot gas gravitating in immense darkness, but arc lamps strung on circuits wrapped around the galaxy. Plasma is upon us, and everything we know is in doubt. Our science libraries are becoming just fire hazards. <laughs> However, unlike that earlier shift, this is not a time to cower and to grieve. This is not so much a cataclysm of destruction, although theories may die in mass, as a flood of opportunity to create a new conceptual world and new sciences. We see the beginnings of a plasma cosmology and a plasma physics, but the shift won't be confined to revising a few equations in physics. There must come a plasma geology and a plasma biology, a plasma anthropology and a plasma psychology. Beyond the sciences, there must come a plasma history and a plasma politics and a plasma theology. We will think thoughts that have never been thought before to match instrument-enhanced sensations that we have never sensed before. The change in worldview will have its full expression in our aesthetic sensibilities, Painting, sculpture, music, dance, theater, all the arts will give aesthetic features to the largely unconscious reorientation of our view of an electric universe. The art that's carved or painted on the rocks of the future may be as different as stick figures are from horses. One thing that doesn't shift with the paradigms is humans making sense of nature's kicks as in making a poem or making a theory. The kicks are undeniable, but non-human nature leaves it to human nature to figure out what it means. We return to the human scale, the scale of caring about human experiences, of making sense of them. Imagine the archetypal human peering into a telescope or a microscope or just into the distance. This human is himself the measure of all the truth he can ever know. The content changes, but his seeking persists. I end with a paraphrase of Camus at the end of the myth of Sisyphus. I leave him, this human, amid the ruins of his latest knowledge. He is still peering ahead at new and ambiguous observations 
and at newly ambiguous old observations. From these heaps of nonsense, he must build another world that makes sense. He knows that it too someday will fall apart, but the struggle itself is enough to fill his heart. We must imagine him happy. I hope that all of you also are happy. <laughs> <laughs>